What an exciting debate, the first of three presidential debates between Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton. I am Jeremy Greenfield, editor, uh, politics editor over at The Street. I'm joined by, again, Emily Stewart, our politics reporter, and Andreas Katsouris from uh, Predicted, the investment market that tracks what people think is going to happen, happen in the U.S. election and myriad other issues. Um, I think we need to get right to the numbers here. The markets did move during this debate, meaning that people who are wagering, who are, who are putting their money on the line about the election uh, have shifted somewhat as a group in who they think might win based on the outcome of the debates. There's many different prediction markets to go over, but let's go over, first of all, that top line number. When we first started the debates, um, roughly what was the percent chance that your market was giving that Donald Trump would be the next president? Sure, Jeremy, thank you. Yeah, the markets really did move significantly uh, over the last hour and a half. When we talked before the debate, uh, Donald Trump was at 38 cents, 38 percent chance uh, to be the next president. Right now he's sitting at 31 cents. So that's a 7 uh, cent or 7 percent drop. That's a pretty significant drop. We've had you know, millions and millions of shares traded on these, on, on these markets. There have been 9 million shares traded overall in Trump. So it's a deep and liquid market. And for it to move that significantly suggests that collectively traders think something important happened today. And you know, unlike the polls where someone's numbers can go down, but someone else's numbers can be, remain static, this means that, conversely, Hi Hillary Clinton's numbers have increased, correct? That's right. And so That's where did right. they start at that the beginning of the uh, debate? She started at 64 cents, and she's now at 69 cents. So almost uh, near, it's about 69 percent chance that's that, right. that it looks like. Um, and, and what, in your estimation, uh, might have moved some of these numbers? Well, that's more a matter of speculation that the markets won't necessarily tell us. Um, but it looks as if uh, traders thought that she delivered a solid performance. Uh, we run another market on, uh, on how many false statements the candidates are going to make, and, and the ones estimating Trump's uh, uh, false statements in September jumped significantly as well, over 20 percent in, uh, in the last hour and a half. Suggests maybe one reason is uh, traders didn't think that Trump a very, presented a very truthful uh, the, the presentation to, to the public today. That, right. that, that may be one, one reason. And we know that the swing states are super important. What happened there? Anything in Ohio, Florida, Pennsylvania, sort of the ones that really make, make a difference? Right. Uh, yeah, Emily, we saw similar movements in the key states as well. So we started off in Florida. Uh, at uh, uh, Hillary was uh, given a 54 percent chance of winning Florida. She's now at 60 cents. So we've had a six cent or a six percent movement in Florida. And it's worth saying here also that you know while Hillary Clinton is giving a 54 percent chance of winning Florida by this market, um, you know according to many polls she's tracking if you average the polls behind in Florida. So the market is taking into account a lot of information more than just what polls say. Things like this debate. That's right, and that's the beauty of prediction markets, is when something happens, the markets reflect them right away. Well, we may see new polls come out in Florida based on sampling tomorrow that will show a change, but it will take several days to put those polls in the field and get the numbers back and digest them. Uh, prediction markets are, are traders looking at those numbers that have come out today and earlier, but also looking at what they see on the screen and trying to make their best judgment about what it all means. And so, we, get, we get to find out right away. Absolutely. So what, what about some other swing states? So Ohio. Uh, Ohio, uh, uh, Trump, uh, Trump was ahead 59% uh, at the beginning of the debate. He's at 53%. Uh, at the moment. So he's dropped six cents in Ohio, but still ahead. And we were looking at Pennsylvania, 67 percent Clinton at the beginning of the debate, and now 74 percent Clinton. So uh, again, across the board, we're looking at a six to eight percent movement in our key markets in favor of Hillary Clinton. Mm -hmm. And I know you guys also had, had a side pool sort of going on whether or not Trump would participate in all three debates. That's been a big question. Yeah. Um, you know, are people saying maybe he'll, he'll skip these next ones after, after tonight? That, 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 that's a good question. We put up that market at a time when he was lower in the polls and seemed to be hedging about you know, whether he would uh, do the debates or was complaining about the, the commission on presidential debates. Um, but we started off at, uh, let me see, I think 81%. Um, that, that he, would he that three. he would participate in all three, and give me a moment, sorry. Yeah. Um, you know, while you're looking at that, I wonder if we should also check into some of the swing states that you know were less swingy and now you know might be more swingy. Um, 
uh, you know, like North Carolina, for instance, and yeah. we can talk to Andreas about that. And, um, you know, some of the states that were seemed safer or in one column or the other, um, like Iowa uh, or Colorado, which now, um, you know, according to the latest polls, might be a little bit more in play. And I, I see that we have up on our screen uh, some North Carolina. It looks like Hillary Clinton made very significant gains in the betting market in North Carolina. She uh, went from, uh, before the debate, um, up uh, for about a 48% chance of winning that state to about a 56% chance after that debate. Uh, so going back to the question so the of question whether Trump is, will be uh, at all three debates, according to the markets. The markets still think it's overwhelmingly likely that he will, but it's dropped uh, 3%, so it's at 78%. So you think that traders might think that the Trump camp will think, we didn't do so well there, maybe we shouldn't go to another one. That, That's that would right. be. That would, you know, hi highly non-traditional and, and certainly controversial. Um, it's I didn't, been that kind of year, well, Jeremy. Well, he's done that before. <laughs> he didn't go, to a didn't go to one of the debates lot in during the primary because he was upset about Megyn Kelly. So it wouldn't be like a shocker completely if he did not go. A absolutely. But I mean, you know, knowing what we know about Trump and uh, having observed him the past few debates, do you think that it's... Um, you know, maybe traders who moved six or seven cents on the question of president maybe only moved three cents on this because how could Trump pass up, you know, the audience that this, that this yeah. debate would promise? I mean, we are told that something like 100 million people might tune into this debate. And actually, you guys had a, a betting market about we, that, we, didn't we, you? We had a market about that as well. Um, but we have to wait for the official numbers to find right. out what it was. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So uh, are there any other swing states that you want to uh, go over with us? Um, you know, I think that we could we could take a look at Colorado. We could take a look at, at Iowa. Absolutely. Well, let's uh, North Carolina, you mentioned. Um, we've got uh, Trump down six cents in, in Virginia, excuse me, in Georgia, which is generally thought to now to be a safe state for Republicans. Uh, still 76 percent, but down significantly. Uh, Democrats are up five, uh, five percent. Five cents in Virginia, uh, Colorado four cents up to seventy-one cents, uh, New Hampshire seventy-six cents for Hillary Clinton up six cents today. So wow. it's really you know, so it looks all like these a, markets are moving and they seem to be moving in tandem. We didn't see a regional focused. Well, we saw a, lot of, a big conversation about trade. They might, you know, trade trade plays differently in different parts of the country. Well, would so. you mind taking a look a, into then Michigan and, and Wisconsin? Sure. And I think just to reiterate for people who might be tuning in uh, right now, live after the debate, that what we're seeing from the prediction election markets, which are people who are investing in one candidate winning or another, and many other things that could happen, like who might win a particular swing state, we're seeing that after the first presidential debate, across the board, Clinton is up six or seven cents in these markets, which translates to about six or seven percentage win points. So some of these markets, it looked, they said that she might win 55% of the time. They're now betting that she might win 62 or 63% of the time. Uh, so how about some of those other upper Midwestern states where sure, trade is a factor? Sure, Michigan, uh, up five points. Democrats, uh, 77 cents for Hillary Clinton. Sure. So it was safely in her column, but even more so. Seven cents as well in, in Wisconsin, 75 cents. The Republican lead in Trump's lead in Iowa cut from 65 to 59 mm -hmm. percent. Um, so I, I wouldn't say we're seeing a, a sort of strong regional focus. Uh, really, any state that's in play seems to be moving more or less in lockstep. So um, let's talk about a sensitive question for these prediction markets, which is that you know prediction markets had it uh, in in the early part of the summer that Brexit would not happen, that, sure. that the the British people would not vote to leave the European Union. I think we were looking at roughly a three to one differential. The, these prediction markets had you know seventy five percent. Uh, we're looking uh, for the UK to stay in. And I wonder if you could talk to us a bit about that. You know, yeah. what happened there where the markets were wrong? And um, how would you compare that to the situation we're now in? Well, I think it's important for, for Democrats who may be taking heart uh, by, by these numbers that 67, 70 percent is really only two times in three. Right. So there's, a, there's Trump is by no means, even if you take these numbers, but Trump is by no means out of the race, and we have a, a long way to go. Mm -hmm. These are probabilities. Yep. And uh, if I tell you the probability of something is 25%, well, it means one in four times it's going to happen. Uh, yep. So it, it, it's hard to talk about the markets in this binary, you know, right, wrong kind of way. But certainly the markets got Brexit wrong. I think everybody got Brexit wrong, the bookies in, 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 uh, in the UK and elsewhere in Europe. 
um, and the pundits. Uh, prediction markets are one important look at a potential political future. I wouldn't want to tell you that they, they're always right or they're the be all and end all. I mean, your viewers should, uh, by all means, take them seriously. But remember, there's, you know, there are thousands of people here all making the same kinds of inferences we're all trying to make mm -hmm. as citizens ourselves. So, and in the way the prediction markets is sort of distilling all of that wisdom into one number sure, and adding it up. Interesting, but yeah. maybe an oversimplification yeah. at times. Yeah, sometimes, but we, they do have an excellent track record. You know, we. Uh, we've compared ourselves to uh, to 538 to Nate Silver's site through the through the primaries and caucuses. Uh, we had an excellent track record. So did that site. On some statistical measures, you know, our traders did better than than their algorithms. Mm -hmm. So yeah. this is this is serious and, and scientifically proven uh, uh, way of estimating. Well, it's it's a little less volatile, right? It's not always as swingy, let's say, as like the, the 538 that you see the now cast go from one thing to the next, sort of the next day, right? That's right. The seven cent, to put it in context, the seven cent movement in a couple of hours is huge. Uh, the markets It is moved. a big swing for your markets, yeah. That's right. I think Hillary's uh, highest uh, uh, percentage after the... Uh, probability after the convention was about 80 cents and she's bottomed out at about well, recently at about 62 63 so it's a you know almost a 20 cent movement over a couple of months 538 for example has moved i think 30 points or more i think from almost 90 to just to, about to, 50 to just about 50 yeah. right and i and i'm not you know, I'm, I'm not criticizing their methodology at all, right. but should be but noted the, that 538 did accurately predict the last two elections, except for one state. That's right. That's right. So they really they do a good we're, job too. We're, we're talking <laughs> about them here. I'm talking about them because we respect what exactly. they've done. Exactly. You know, the election, the prediction markets are are have been highly accurate. That's right. Um, in, in the past, maybe you could look in uh, to see where we are on some of the interesting prop bets that we saw. Um, the over-unders on whether Benghazi would come up, whether the word liar would be used, and, and we can talk a little bit over here for a second about, um, are you surprised by what you've seen uh, with the move of the markets? Did you get the impression that, that Hillary uh, maybe won the debate? I mean, I, she seemed prepared, but not over-prepared. I think that was the thing going on. You know, is Hillary Clinton going to be over-prepared and so, so much of a lawyer that, that you can't enjoy her. And, and I feel almost like the between two ferns thing that she did like last week was helpful, that she seemed a little bit relaxed but prepared. And I think Donald Trump, you know, we we knew he wasn't going to prepare a ton. That's, that's not what he does. But I was a little surprised that they, it really seemed like he was sort of weighing it at times. Um, and he kind of brought up stuff in my mind that, that wasn't in his favor. At the end, talking about Rosie O'Donnell, you know, why? Who are you helping here? Yeah. I, I mean, what did you think? Um, you know, I, I thought the same thing. The only prediction I was willing to make about uh, this debate was that everyone's expectations would be dashed. I mean, they were so sky high, and that, of course, is just a recipe for them to be dashed. Um, you know, we did see some of the fireworks that, that, that Trump talked over Clinton many times. Uh, they did have um, battles about, um, you know, lying and about, you know, uh, Clinton's appearance and about uh, racism. These are issues that may not play as well. Uh, for the voters that Trump hasn't already won. Um, but maybe we, let's go to some of those uh, over-under bets and the more fun things and see, see how they turned out. Well, it wasn't that fun as it turned out. <laughs> <laughs> All those markets have closed, of course. Yep. Yeah. Uh, and Berther, if you, if you put a few pennies or a few dollars on Berther in the beer drinking game we were talking about, certainly that came up. But I think all the others, all the others closed at no. So if you bet against, um, say, Benghazi being mentioned a certain number of times, you would have lost that you bet. Have, you and, and would have lost your stake. That's really, right. so all, all those fun drinking game bets really went to, maybe we had a, a slightly more substantive debate than <laughs> people, Perhaps. if we can glean anything from that, that people right. would have thought. That's right, and they were all, they were all in the 20, 25, 30%, so uh, uh, range before the debate, so um, people weren't taking them terribly seriously. I think we had a substantive debate, yeah. Jeremy and Emily. I mean, I, it, uh, there were some fireworks, but, you know, it didn't devolve the way some people feared. Uh, so, so let's go back to that headline number again. We're looking at Hillary up, you know, in the mid-single digits uh, across the board. Now, in the beginning when we were talking, if you go into TST Politics, you can see that we were, we were tweeting this periodically, um, that 
the uh, market was in her favor by a couple of cents in the beginning, maybe three cents, a little bit more than halfway through, and it seems that it accelerated at the end. Is that something you noticed as That's well? That's right. We were following it uh, all, all debate long, and there was some movement, I think, even in the first 20 minutes, uh, and then it sort of stabilized a couple cents up, and then there was a real acceleration in the numbers in the last 20 minutes or half an hour. Did Trump have a particularly bad you know, second half to the debate, maybe so. I think he started to wander a little more than, than he did initially. That's mm -hmm. possible. And it may take people time to digest as well of what's really happening here and to form an opinion and to be able to make an investment decision on that basis. So we may see some movement in, in the numbers, you know, after, after this discussion, all through the evening and into tomorrow. So, you know, there was a lot of talk about stamina in this debate. You know, Trump wasn't practicing. Um, you know, Clinton had had pneumonia, and, and there were you know questions uh, from some people about her health. Um, but it sounds like, from what you said and what we observed in the the prediction markets, that maybe Trump's ability to stay on message, stay under control, um, deal with whatever Clinton threw at him, maybe that got worn down a little bit throughout the debate. Maybe. I mean, even at, at the end, I can't remember now what the last question was. Oh, is it will you accept the result uh, of the election? And he, he defaults to, well, what, we're going to make America great again. And, and I think that at some point, yeah, it is tiring, but it's tiring for both of them. I mean, but they also know that the first 30 minutes of the debate are what really matters. I mean, ultimately, how many people sat through an hour and a half? Plenty of people tuned out, at least partly, by, you know, a good 30, 45 minutes in. So it's hard to tell. And you wonder if traders who are watching every you know bit of information that they can get about the election are factoring in the first half of the debate being that big moment that more people are going to pay attention to rather than the second half and maybe we saw a little bit too much of a swing at the end of the the night it, it's possible I mean, our, our, our traders are political junkies by or by temperament i mean people who will, won't, won't have any trouble sitting through a 90 minute debate who pour over the polls who who have something at stake uh, but the, the art of uh, predictions like this are not predicting what you know, you're interested in, but what you expect the electorate uh, is going to do. So we'll, we'll, get a, we'll get a reading as well tomorrow, depending on the news coverage, depending on what's, you know, what's featured, um, what segments of the debate show up. Great. Which may, which Before may we go, opinion. maybe yeah. let's make some predictions of our own. Do you think that we're going to see Trump at all three debates? My personal opinion? Personal opinion. Uh, one, uh, one person's uh, ability to move the market. Yeah, I think it's inconceivable he's not going to take what about you, Emily? the other two. Yeah, I think he'll do both. I mean, especially if, if tonight didn't go well for him, he's, he's going to want to show up for number two and three to prove that, that he can do it. Maybe he'll do his homework. I mean, Obama didn't have a great first debate in 2012. So, you know, he has, he has a few more chances if, if tonight really does look like it didn't go that well. Well, if we see Donald Trump for two more debates, I think it would be a, a real treat for everyone to see these two candidates uh, go at each other again. Hopefully, we'll have Andreas uh, and Predict It back with us, and uh, you'll definitely have me uh, and Emily Stewart and uh, for The Street and The Street Politics at The Street on Twitter and at TST Politics uh, on Twitter. I'm Jeremy Greenfield, Politics Editor of The Street. Have a good night.